What we want to look at now is sizing structural members. Anytime we uh, determine the size of floor joists or ceiling joists or roof rafters, we need to consult with the tables in our uh, governing code. And what you see in front of you is a table, table R502.3.1, uh, which is a residential floor joist span chart. Um, there's several things that we need to look at before we learn how to read this chart. Because there are a lot of structural terms. And as carpenters, we need to communicate with architects and engineers. And so we need to understand what it is that this, car, this chart talks about. Uh, the first thing we notice up there, this says residential living areas. Right here, residential living areas, live load equals 40 pounds per square foot. And then we have a couple spots here where we see dead load, 10 pounds per square foot, and dead load, 20 pounds per square foot. Well, the first thing we have to do is distinguish between the two types of loads. And dead load is the weight of the materials of the building that the floor must support. So dead load would involve the joists themselves, any sheeting that's attached to that, walls that are going to set onto the floor, non-bearing partition walls, the sheetrock on the walls, um, any of those things. And you'll also notice that we have a dead load of 10 pounds and dead load of 20 pounds. The difference between the two is the dead load 10 pounds is a floor with no ceiling support on the other side. Where we have dead load of 20 pounds, we will have a ceiling attached to that as we would on a second floor floor system where the downstairs ceiling would be attached to the floor system. The other thing we see is we see a live load of 40 pounds per square foot. A live load, those are those things that um, are not constant, things that change. They're the loads that are caused by people, furniture, appliances, those kinds of things on a floor are considered live load. And for residential living areas, we use 40 pounds per square foot, as opposed to sleeping areas where we use only 30 pounds per square foot. The next thing you'll see on all span charts is L over delta equals 360. And this is what is called the allowable deflection. All of our floor systems and ceiling systems have a certain stiffness. And a floor system, we don't want a floor that if you have a, a hutch and someone walks across the floor, uh, the glassware in the hutch begins to rattle. We want our floor much stiffer than that, um, as opposed to a roof. If a, if a roof, uh, load is such that the stiffness isn't as substantial and we get some vibration from wind or, or different loads, it's not as critical as it is on a floor load. Therefore, we are going to demand a much stiffer system for a floor. And we have L over 360. And L stands for our span in inches. So for example, if we have a, a floor that is 16 foot or 192 inches and we have a deflection of 360, we will convert that and that's going to be very close to one half inch deflection. That means that our floor system is able to deflect our bow down one half of an inch and still be in the safe realm. Now, what we want to look at 
on our span chart are a couple other things that are listed here. And the next thing would be our joist spacing. Here we see joist spacing and we have 12, 16, 19.2, and 24. These are the spacing of our structural members, the 12 inch centers, 16 inch centers, 19.2 inch centers, and 24 inch centers. Depending on the spacing, that also influences the stiffness of our floor. Generally speaking, we usually set things on 16 inch centers. The next thing you see on this chart is species and grade. Here we're talking about material strength. All wood, as you well know, is not created equal. Some species of wood has much greater strength characteristics than other species. Douglas fir, for example, is a very strong wood, uh, not as, uh, as strong as, we'll have to edit that out. Um, then we have hemlock fir southern pine, and spruce pine fir. We're going to look especially at southern pine because that is generally what we find in our lumber yards in southern Illinois. The next thing we have that helps determine material strength is going to be um, grade. And we have four different grades shown here. We have SS, which stands for Select Structural, we have number one, number two, and number three common. Uh, those grades of lumber are explained in your book, but a further note on that is we have two grading agencies, two associations that uh, set the standards for grading. One is the Southern Pine Inspection Bureau, and the other one is the Western Woods Product Association. And they set the guidelines that we, in the construction business, use to determine the grade of the lumber. Now what we want to do is look at uh, calculating what floor joist we would use say we're going to go to our grandmother's house and she wants to turn an old garage built-in garage on her house and she wants it to now become her living room space so the first thing we're going to do is measure our span now span is measured not from outside to outside but if this is a mud sill and that is a mud sill placed on top it is measured from the inside of the mud sill to the inside of the mud sill or if we're on the with a center beam in the house and this is a beam that's set on a on some kind of a pier it's measured from the inside of the mud sill to the center line of the pier. 